Hi, welcome to Computer and Network Security. Today we are going to talk about S-MIME. So to start off, uh, I'm going to explain what uh, S-MIME is and then go over uh, MIME and then we'll come back to S-MIME and I'll talk to you about the uh, advantages and uh, the modifications that have been made. So S-MIME is the Secure Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension. It's a security enhancement to the MIME Internet Email Format Standard based on technology from RSA Data Security. There are four RFCs, Request for Comments, in which uh, S-MIME has been defined, 3370, 3850, 3851, and 3852. Okay, so starting off with RFC 5322, this just defined a format for text messages that are sent using electronic mail. Um, and just to clarify, since this RFC was written uh, before the days of smartphones and text messaging, this is not referring to text messages that we have on our phones. Instead, this is just discussing how we can send text uh, using email, using electronic mail. Uh, messages are viewed as having an envelope and then contents. The envelope contains whatever information is needed to accomplish transmission and delivery. This would be a header information. Uh, the person to whom this email is destined and whatever other information that we need to get the message to where it needs to go. The contents compose the object to be delivered to the recipient and RFC 5322 only applies to the contents of the email. This includes a set of header fields that may be used by the mail system to create the email. So MIME is an extension to RFC 5322 and it addresses some of the limitations because RFC 5322 was just for sending text. Well, as we started to use email more and more frequently, people decided that they wanted to be able to attach elements to emails. Maybe we want to send an image. Uh, maybe we want to have a cool signature. Uh, maybe we wanted to be able to send a video, documents, things like that. And so mine uh, came out so that we could try to address some of the problems of just being able to send text-based emails. <coughs> um, so these specifications for MIME are defined in RFCs 2045 and uh, all the way up through 2049. So some of the specifications here included five new message headers were defined with MIME. Um, and these fields then provided information about what was included in the body of the email. We had some content formats defined, standardizing representations, supporting multimedia electronic mail. So this would be videos and uh, images attached to it. And then some transfer encodings as well. The five header fields that we have defined in MIME, uh, the MIME version, this is going to be uh, 1.0, the content type, describes the data contained in the body such that the receiving user can pick up an appropriate agent or mechanism to represent the data to the user or otherwise deal with the data. The content transfer encoding uh, indicates the type of the transformation that's been used to represent the body of the message in a way that the uh, is acceptable for mail transport. The content ID and then the content uh, description. So here are the MIME content types. Um, so you can see that uh, we still could just send unformatted text, so that would just be content type would be text and plain. Uh, we could have enriched text. Uh, this would be like rich text, like HTML, uh, which is how a lot of emails are sent nowadays, so that they uh, have um, bold and italics and colors, underline, things like that, uh, like we have with websites. We have multi-part messages uh, so that we can have uh, different parts to an email. So maybe one part of the email is in plain text and then another part is in rich text and then another part has a video attached to it. So this would be a multi-part message. Um, if we keep going down to message and then below that you see image. Um, originally JPEG and GIF were the only two types of images. Obviously we can email more than just that. Now though, of those two types of images, we can send videos. MPEG is not the only type of video that we can send. Uh, audio also, you can send different audio messages, MP3, MP4, um, and so on. And then uh, applications also, we could attach uh, a postscript format, a .ps. Um, this is 
more of a, um, a, a Unix and a Linux format, but there are PostScript readers in Windows as well. Uh, you can attach PDFs, you can attach Word docs, you can attach all kinds of different types uh, of documents now. But this was the MIME standard. Here is just a sample uh, MIME message structure. So you see up at the top we have the version as 1.0. Uh, we have some header information which was included from uh, the previous um, email RFC. And then we get down to content type and it shows multi-part mixed. Um, and so we get down a little bit further and you see here's content type audio basic. And then we have a content type image JPEG, content type text enriched and you see that it's uh, HTML down there. So this would be a multi-part mine so that we can have uh, different types of data at different parts in the email that we're transmitting. So now moving to SMIME, what is the added functionality that we have uh, with SMIME? So we have uh, enveloped data, consists of encrypted content of any type and encrypted content encryption keys for one or more recipients. So what we're able to do with SMIME now is that we're extending the capabilities of MIME. MIME allowed us to start adding some more data into our email so that it wasn't just text-based. However, SMIME now allows us to start securing this. Um, it's somewhat similar to PGP where we have some open algorithms here. We can use different algorithms throughout SMIME. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at the next one, sign data, digital signature is formed by taking the message digest of the content to be signed, encrypting that with the private key of the signer. What this means, the message digest is another way of saying hashing. Uh, so signed data would be just like how we hashed in PGP. Go back and review that lecture if you don't remember uh, how we did that with SHA-1 uh, in PGP. So that would be signed data. Uh, if we go down to the bottom left, the clear signed data. Uh, only the digital signature is encoded using Base64, and then recipients without SMIME can still view the message content, although they cannot verify the signature. Uh, so uh, this allows us to transmit emails securely. However, if somebody doesn't have uh, SMIME capability, they're still going to be able to read the email. They're just not going to be able to verify uh, from whom it came or that uh, it actually is correct from what was transmitted originally. And then, of course, so the, the uh, enveloped data would be encrypting, the signed data would be hashing as we go down to the bottom, the signed and enveloped data. So obviously what we're going to be doing is hashing and encrypting so that we can provide both confidentiality as well as authentication, very similar to uh, how PGP works. Okay, so uh, the different algorithms that are used in SMIME, so you can see here uh, that we do use SHA-1, very similar to PGP. Uh, we could do MD5 also, um, just another encryption algorithm, you can look that up. Um, encrypting the message digest form, a digital signature, it must support DSS. Uh, we should also have RSA, and you see that it says that we should support verification of RSA signatures with key sizes from 512 to 1024. As time goes on, these numbers have to change. As computers start getting faster, we're going to have to bump up these numbers. Okay, when we encrypt the session key for transmission with a message, uh, this is Diffie-Hellman. We talked about this with PGP also. We also talked about El Gamal. So it needs to at least be able to support uh, Diffie-Hellman. Uh, El Gamal was very similar to Diffie-Hellman, though, for how we were transmitting uh, the session keys, which is for the symmetric key encryption algorithms. Uh, we then encrypt the message for transmission with a one-time session key, so this would be with a symmetric key algorithm. You see that it says that we should be using AES, uh, so a little different than PGP there, using AES instead of uh, triple desk. And uh, the bottom one then, create a message authentication code, has to support uh, HMAC with SHA-1, so again, just some uh, encryption algorithms there, or sorry, some hashing algorithms there. Since we are transmitting SMIME over MIME, we have to have some different content types that we use, similar to what I just showed you in the uh, MIME headers. So here we have a multi-part sign, and this would be a clear signed message in two parts. We also have these different applications if we're using uh, signed data, enveloped data, uh, compressed data, 
and so on. So again, this is very similar to PGP. In this case, this is just the header types that have to go into that content type field so that we uh, can let our receiver know exactly what we've done with the email once they have received it. Okay, how do we secure a uh, MIME entity? So SMIME uh, secures it with either a signature, encryption, or both. We kind of have already gone through this. The MIME entity is prepared according to normal rules. Uh, but then we're just adding a little bit more on top of it. So we're going to encrypt it. We're going to hash it. We utilize certificates. Uh, you'll see that we utilize the X509. We talked about that earlier also. So we use the X509 certificates with certifying authorities. Um, this all together process uh, produces what's known as a PKCS object. Uh, PKCS stands for the Public Key Cryptography Specification, and uh, so that's the PKCS object. This was coined by uh, RSA Laboratories, uh, and this is used in SMIME. This object then is treated as a message content. It's wrapped with MIME, and so we have um, a secure message inside of the MIME message, which is then what's transmitted uh, across the line. Okay, how do we prepare uh, and envelop data MIME. So we start off with step one at the top there, generate a pseudo random session key for a particular symmetric key algorithm. For each recipient, encrypt that session key with the recipient's public RSA key. Just as we've talked about before, uh, we are generating this session key and that is going to be our uh, symmetric key that we utilize. For each recipient, prepare a block known as the recipient info. It contains an identifier of the recipient's public key certificate identify the algorithm used and the encrypted session key. It has to be encrypted because on the other side we're going to decrypt it and we have to get that session key back out so that we can then uh, decrypt the, uh, the encrypted data with the symmetric key. Okay, for preparing a signed data mine, we select a message digest algorithm, so SHA or uh, MD5. We compute the message digest, which is the hash function uh, of the content to be signed. We encrypt the message digest with the signer's private key, and then we go ahead and send that off. You see it's in a block known as the signer info. So this is very similar analogous steps to what we've done in uh, PGP. Certificate processing. So uh, SMIME for the public key certificates that we've talked about on the previous slides, it uses uh, version 3 of X.509. We've already talked about X.509, how certificates are stored, the certifying authorities, and so on. Uh, key management scheme is somehow a hybrid between X.509 and PGP's web of trust, so you can see how uh, the keys are maintained utilizing X.509 primarily, but you see that it does have this uh, cross-pollination with PGP as well. And um, the certificates then are signed by certification authorities, such as VeriSign being one of the uh, largest ones. There are other ones, but this is one of the primary uh, certification authorities. Okay, so that gives you an overview of SMIME. Our textbook goes into great detail on SMIME, so please take a look at that and read the papers that I have posted uh, for today's lecture.